more evidence. You should see her do a mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> now, the Tamil family fighting to stay in Australia has been granted a slight reprieve with a court ruling they are not to be deported for at least another 12 days. The federal court has asked the Immigration Minister for more evidence to support claims the youngest child, Veronica, who was born in Australia, has no right to protection. Why uh, make, make them go through this process? Just just bring them back to Bolivia and and all and, and all this now. Uh, there's so much money being wasted on this. Uh, just bring them back. Meantime, Priya Nadez and their two daughters have been detained on Christmas Island since last Friday. The family was being deported to Sri Lanka, but were thrown a lifeline when an 11th hour injunction was granted to assess the youngest child's claim. Having experienced the isolation here and the disconnect from the world, I do, I really worry about them. La Raj Vikramatunga is Sri Lanka's Consul General in Australia and he joins us now. Thank you very much for your time. I think it's fair to say that a lot of Australians are concerned for the family's safety should they be sent back to Sri Lanka. Can you, as a representative of the Sri Lankan government, guarantee that if they are sent back, no harm will come to them? Uh, most certainly, uh, Sri Lankan, the current government stance is that all Sri Lankans who left the shores during the conflict are welcome back, and uh, that is their stance. And many have gone back and integrated back in their homeland. And yet we know that there are some Sri Lankans who've returned to their home country and they've been arrested when they've arrived back. Where does this family sit in that scenario? Those who have been found to have had uh, terrorism links have been gazetted and their names are published. It's only those who come back are arrested and investigated and even they are rehabilitated. This family, there is no such record. They are not on record. So to be clear, every person that will be arrested is written down and known beforehand and there is nobody outside that list that will be arrested or punished in any other way? That's correct. This 2017 report from the UN seems to paint a different picture to this. This is from the UN Special, Re Special Rapporteur. Uh, I'll just quote it. It says, entire communities have been stigmatised and targeted for harassment and arbitrary arrest and detention. And any person suspected of association, however indirect, with the Tigers, that's the Tamil Tigers, remains at immediate risk of detention and torture. Um, that's a fairly strong scenario that they're painting. Which part of that do you dispute? That, that, that report refers to uh, uh, the old story. Uh, the, the conflict uh, ended in 2009 and uh, this, there has been a UN uh, resolution and the new government has co-sponsored that resolution in showing their intentions that they need to deal with that. This family escaped terrible violence in your country. Um, we've heard that Priya saw her former fiancé burned alive. Um, obviously, there are concerns surrounding her going back. What I'd like to know is what sort of help there is going to be to help her assimilate back into the community. Well, what she saw probably was pre-2009, if that did happen. But most of them, when they go back, they go back, they have other extended family around and they're welcome to come back and integrate. But knowing that this is a, an ongoing problem, is the government doing anything to help directly? Definitely. And, and there is a rehabilitation process for those who were involved. They have been reintegrated. And all the Tamils who come back, go back into their communities and resume life as it was before. Can I just come back to what you were saying about how there's a list of people who would be arrested? Uh, who are wanted by the government and anyone who's not on that list will not be affected upon return. Given that we do know that there are at least one person who was arrested upon return, it seems to me that that would be impossible that that would happen, that, that an Australian government or someone assessing a refugee claim would send someone who is on a list for arrest back to Sri Lanka in those circumstances. So how would you explain the arrest of that person, given it seems so likely that they would be on, an, on a list? Well, when you say arrest, I mean, you're not talking of arbitrary arrest. You, you go through a process of investigation and find out how uh, deeply the person was involved in terrorism or taking another's life. 
that's sure, but it. that's a different... If you're saying there's a process of investigation, that's a different thing to saying there is already a list of people and if you're on the list, you're, you're in trouble and if you're not on the list, you're yes. safe. They're actually two different versions of events. Yes. So, so which one is it that prevails? No, no, no. When, I, when, when you first asked me whether somebody returning would be arrested, the only people who would be arrested would be those in the list which is gazetted and updated every year. OK, so that requires you to assert that Australia sent back somebody who was already on a list and it was gazetted and Australia just overlooked that and just sent them back and then they got arrested. It's either that or they that went could... back, they weren't on the list and they got arrested anyway, which seems a, a much bigger concern. No, well, uh, well uh, I don't know which individual case you're talking of, but my understanding and my instructions are that. Uh, if this person was, maybe he was arrested for some other offence. I don't know. OK. Consul General uh, Vikramatunga, thank you very much for your time tonight. It's been great to have access to you. Okay, okay.